<laughs> Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Today I've got two replays in the VK45028 and if you haven't guessed by the title, this is the third mark of excellence video for this tank. Now this is a tank that is similar to the Tiger II, <coughs> but it's not the Tiger II. Now it's similar to the Tiger II in the way it's shaped. Its armor's very similar, it's got the same turret. One thing that is different is its gun. It's got the, I think it's the second upgradable gun for the Tiger II, because the Tiger II gets this 105 that this tank has, and then it has the other 105, which is the really accurate one, good high pen, whereas this only has 200 pen and 244 APCR. Now, back in the day, I hated this tank, right? Because this tank was pretty horrible, because it was a Tiger II, but worse. I think it had, it, it, and it still does, it had better mobility, which is very nice about the tank. It does shift about quite nicely. It's a good little flanker of a heavy, right? And you played it more like a medium than a heavy. But it had issues. Like the fact that obviously its gun handling was worse, it had way worse pen. It also only had six degrees of gun depression, which was painful for saying that obviously you're quite a tall tank. And its armour was tragic. It was a type of armour where they just pen the upper plate like, like it was butter, which again, painful. But then they buffed it. They buffed it way, way back. And they gave it eight degrees of gun depression, same as the Tiger II, which delightful, right? They buffed its upper plate armour, so actually the armour on this now is, it always feels, except for the turret, feels slightly better than the Tiger II. The lower plate is definitely better than the Tiger II, it's just so, sort of an awkward angle. So the upper plate can bounce things, well, it can bounce just about what the Tiger II can, because obviously the Tiger II's armour isn't the best, right? But it can bounce what the Tiger II does, and a little bit more. And then the lower plate is also very well angled to the point where that can also bounce shots and be very trolled to things that have about 200 pen or less, you know. So it's quite nice in that way. And to be honest, I've quite enjoyed going back to this tank. It's something I've been working on for a little while. And we finally got it up to about the point when, you know, some big games would get it over across the line. So in this game on Fisherman's Bay, we've taken up this key position here like I quite usually do in medium tanks and that is this position here at E6, E7, E5 like you can take up this position and get great shots across at people that are crossing into the town you can get good shots at people as they're being pressured out of the town it's just a nice little location to be and it's also got the ability as well of being here that you can then think all oh, the other flanks falling and you can shift across and go help that flank so these guys on the enemy team right now have basically crossed into my killing field. And that's because they are trapped. My team has pushed the town very, very heavily. And they're basically shoving them out of the town and into my gun line. And that's what's all that's happened basically this game. Is they've all been too preoccupied with what's going on with the team in the base. And they've just been giving me some lovely shots. Which is delightful. So, I mean, we're up to 3k damage now. We're, I mean, it was about 2.5, I think, to 3 mark this tank. So, we're above what we need to move. And we've got a little bit of assistance as well. There's five tanks left. So, there's two in that corner. There's the medium in front of me. And there's a heavy on the right. So, it's like, okay, I'm going to go get this medium. Unfortunately, we try and snap the shot into the turret of the Udez, which... We can pen the Udez very easily, but unfortunately our shell missed him. He made a mockery of our turret armour. Fortunately enough for us, he bounced on our turret then, and then he's dead. So there's just this Shashka in front of me, and I'm like, okay, I want this guy. So we load the HE. I'm hoping to get a nice juicy HE round into this guy. Oh, unfortunately, he gets shut down, and we don't get any more on him. There's just one heavy tank left, and he's over there, and it's a defender. The likelihood of me getting damage on this guy is very unlikely looking at what's around him. He's probably going to get farmed. See, the, the armour, the frontal hull armour on this tank is quite nice. This tank can side scrape decently as well, which is good. The turret armour is just like the Tiger II. It's just disappointing. It, it's one of those things that it's kind of weak because it's got 185mm of turret armour. So if they catch the cheeks and they've got like 200 more than that pen... They just go through it. 
and it just makes a little sad occurrence. So we finished that game, 3.9k damage, ace tanker, and we're up to 93.86, which we're well within the realms of having that third mark within a, good, a very good game, generally. And by very good game, you're probably looking at like, you know, 5, 6k to be able to get that, to go up that whole percentage you needed. So in between that game and this game, I, there was definitely a game that had, I think it was about 2k damage. So we, I think we've... I think we moved up to about 94.1% or something like that, 94.01%. So we're still in the realms of having a good game and getting it over. And then we have this game on Mountain Pass. And we're in nice matchmaking because obviously the last game that we had was pretty, pretty terrible matchmaking, to be fair. And then we've got this one now, which is nice. And I'm looking at this game going, oh, thank God it's not tier 10 matchmaking. Because tier 10 matchmaking can be, I mean, obviously, tier 10 matchmaking, tier 8 right, can be a right pain in the ass. And this tank is one of those that doesn't like those sorts of matchups. So this T3485 has found himself in a precarious position, and he's gone. We, uh, we somehow ricocheted on him on the way across, and obviously with the new crew skills, the, the gun handling on this tank is fabulous, as is most tanks. So we were able to hit him on the move, and, you know, it's... It's one of those things that this tank doesn't miss as much as it used to. Because obviously the Tiger 2, King Tiger, has 0.31 accuracy. This has 0.34. Like I say, it's definitely less accurate. But nowadays it's not that bad. So I was going to go for the track there, but then I ended up just getting the damage him because he was blowing up and look how many of my team are here. Then this IS-3 pops around. We try and snap a shot into him as he pops around the corner, but unfortunately we didn't do it. The shot goes high and ricochets off the turret of the IS-3, which is, again, very sad, very sad. And I'm looking at this guy going, am I likely to pen him every time? Possibly not with standards, so I'm going to go with the Prem. Because I really have to hit him in the exact right spot with an IS-3, otherwise it's awkward. And we have tracked him and penned him, and I'm hoping for assistance, but unfortunately he just didn't get shot when I had him tracked. That and people bouncing on him, which was really annoying. So the tracking that I got on him was, well, non-existent, which is what we were aiming for. Because when everyone was charging around the corner, it was like, oh, I can track him and get all the assistance. And that's probably like, you know, 1,200 assistance for me, right? But I didn't, I got like three shots into him instead. So, I mean, we'll take it at the end of the day. It's not like I tracked him and then he repaired and everyone blew him up after that. So we're just going to keep charging. And again, gun handling comes into play. Run and gun skill is one that you want to run on most tanks. We slap that guy on the move very easily. And we're just going to keep progressing now because there's a KV-4 there, which I'm kind of surprised I'm going to keep penning quite reliably. Because KV-4s, when I'm shooting the side for some reason, and I've not got like 220 odd pen. They're just absorbed. I, I said it, didn't I? They absorb shells. There you go. They absorb that one. And I'm looking at this one, hoping for the pen here. Fortunately enough for me, he just turns slightly so that he's unangled and we get the nice shot into him. Now, there's all these guys camping on the hill for whatever reason they decided to do that I don't know but it's perfect because that is the farm that I want as long as this gun can keep reloading I don't know why I haven't pressed B yet sometimes I do forget at the minute especially you know obviously having this new system and having the new food that I could just press B and like make my DPM better and there we go we've pressed it now we're all in on this ISM it's time to farm with the good DPM so I'm face hugging him because I'm like, it's, it's mine. He's mine. And we just block his shot as well as that. And we he, well, he we don't shut him down, but he gets shut down. Now there's an artillery in their base. There's something else around there. But I'm thinking, you know what? I think all of their team is... Basically, we've been watching the map, right? And we spot where most of their team is, look. So, so there's two heavies down there at C7. And then there's heavy on the bridge. So I'm kind of thinking they're all down there, so it's where I want to be heading to, right? We come across this Tiger 1, we pop a nice shot into him, then he gets shot down. And like I say, we're seeing where the enemy team is, so we're, we're going to go in. We're going to try and drop down off this bridge and get in front of them and try and fight them. Now normally I could slide down there, but they've added some rocks there, which means I can't actually slide down there. So I've got to change my positioning on where I'm going. So we slide down this side of the bridge and then head up that way. That guy's been shut down, and I'm hoping now that there's something healthy in front of me. Oh, and look what it is. It's a stockade, which 
I'm kind of scared of, not going to lie, because he could end my day quite unhelpfully. But he seems to be reloading. So you know what? We're going to go for the track. We track him. Get some tracking assist on him. This is what we want right at the end of the game. We got all of his health in tracking. And that's what I mean when you go in for these third marks. Things like that. When you've not got much assistance. You come across a full health tank and you've got backup. Track it. Track it and get that assistance. Otherwise I'd have only had like 200 assistance at the end of this game. But I ended up with an extra 1300 just because I tracked that guy. So we end that game and we end up with 3.8k damage. 1500 assisted. So that's, you know, that's what looking at nearly 6k combined. And we get the third mark of excellence. So that's an ace tanker, confederate, sniper, high caliber, and the third mark of excellence for the VK4502A. And it was a tank that I kind of enjoyed playing, to be honest. It, it's definitely different. It, and it's, it's, you know, it's an okay tank nowadays. It's not the best tier 8 in the universe. It's a lot better. But, you know, it's not too bad. So, as always, everybody, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll catch you next time.